fire, fire. That's the three times. After three, two, three. And then put your hand on your head and just say, fall on me. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Amen. I'd like us to remain standing if we can stand in honor of the man of God. I want to invite to uh, this pulpit uh, our apostle Keith McLeod to come and uh, just minister as thus saith the Lord. Let's give him a round of applause as he will come. Amen, 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 amen. Bless you, Lord. Bless you, Lord. Bless you, Lord. Thank you for the love of God. Thank you for the love of God. intercessor, prayer warrior in our church, I'd like you to step into the aisles, some of you at the back, some in this corner here, and we're going to pray. Would you come? If you're, you're a prayer warrior, you know who you are. I know some of you are secret, so you may want to remain so, but others, please come out. Some in the back, by the doors, some in the aisles. We're going to have a prayer for a moment. We're going to pray to the Lord. I'm going to ask my armor bearer, Mr. Elect David, to come and pray. I'd like you to pray with him. We want the heavens to be open here for God to do what he wants to do. We're going to take a few minutes to pray. Let us pray. Let us pray. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, praise the Lord, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, praise the Lord, hallelujah. We're going to decree and declare hallelujah. Praise the Lord, hallelujah. Let's shout to the Lord, let's shout to the Lord, let's shout to the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Because you're a weapon. 
country. He says, don't blaspheme the Holy Ghost. And one day I will teach, I believe something happened, Pastor, well, I can't see a Pastor, but she did a lot, that, some of that in the Bible school when I was pleased she touched it. And there was discussion. You must not touch the Holy Ghost. Don't touch the Holy Ghost. If you don't understand and you make a mistake of judgment, God will forgive you. But if you understand and then you make a bad judgment on the Spirit and call the Holy Spirit a dark spirit or as a demon, then you're edging on to blasphemy. I wish I'd got the whole church saying amen. You must be very careful. Jesus said, do not touch the Holy Ghost. Jesus said, you can make a judgment on the Father's throne, on God's throne, on anything concerning Him. You can speak against it and it will be forgiven. But not the Holy Ghost. If we blaspheme. Well, I will explain that. But today is the day of the power of Pentecost Amen. in its unlimited form yes. and I want you to be hungry yes. for more Amen. of God's Pentecost power. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I'm not supporting Pentecostalism. I'm not talking about that. We're talking about the experience of Pentecost. Hallelujah. Pentecost changed my whole life. When I spoke in tongues, I have not stopped. As you could hear me earlier, I have not stopped doing that ever since. Hallelujah. I encourage you to open your hearts and receive the Holy Spirit in another dimension today. Who wants another dimension of the Holy Spirit? Are you up for who wants another dimension? There is a dimension beyond where you're at and where I'm at. There is another dimension, another room that you can enter into the Spirit of God. And so I, I'm, I'm just God's servant sharing this with us today that the Holy Spirit must be honored. Holy Ghost must be honored. If you don't understand it, shh, shh, zip your mouth. I said, if you don't understand it, zip your mouth. Zip your heart. Be careful. Because God's going to pull down these false teachers. He's going to bring them to law, to repentance. They must stop. And the thing about it, they know better. But it's just to get the views, just to get a characterization of saying something different, to get publicity. These things must stop. In the name of Jesus. For it is an entrapment to, this, to destroy the true knowledge of God and to, to destroy God's pure people and pull us in the wrong direction. I'm an apostle, I can say those things without any, any intimidation. These things must stop. God is looking on and God is going to act. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Well, the thing is, this is our birthday gift. This is a, how we got born again fully in the Lord. And it's just such a wonderful moment for us to look at the scriptures. We're turning again to Acts chapter 19, our reading. Thank you, Sister Denise, for reading wonderfully the scripture earlier on in the service. And in verse 1 of chapter 19 of the book of Acts of the Apostles, if you please put this back on the screen, thank you. 
And we're just going to analyze a few verses and let God take us on the road he's, he wants to take us. It says, and it came to pass. Everyone said it came to pass. Came to pass. That phrase is very powerful in the scriptures. It just means there's some things where people were struggling on or it didn't quite appear yet or God gave a promise and it's delayed but the Bible says and it came to pass things in your life are coming to pass Amen. you may not see it yet but it's just around the corner Amen. the next corner you get to is the change and the blessing of your life it says that while it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul having passed through the upper coast to Ephesus and finding certain disciples. I want to tell you about Apollos. Apollos, it is even stated that he was probably one of the writers of the Hebrews and not Paul. It's, it's a discussion about that for many years. And Apollos was known to be mighty in the Bible, in the scriptures. And he was in a town one day and he was preaching. And uh, he was touching the masses on the streets. So he was eloquent and he knew the word of God. But he lacked something. This is what's going on in the world. People are speaking about the word of God, but they lack certain things. Their reverence, their pastors, their bishops, but they lack something. Apostles preaching in the town center, and there was a couple called, I think uh, by memory, Aquila and Priscilla. And they were walking by and they said, this man is really blessed. But they knew he lacked something. And any of us can lack. And if we lack, we need help. And we need someone to take us on the right path. So Paulus was lacking, although he could preach, but he was lacking. Although he was teaching, he was lacking. There was something missing in him. And Priscilla and Aquila took him home for a Sunday dinner. And as they were eating around the table, the Bible says that they showed the Paulus the word more perfectly. They explained things. And when they explained things, Paulus, Apollos, who he didn't move in the spirit. He didn't move, he, he had knowledge and he had God's blessing on him and he was preaching the word in the basic understanding. This is what I'm trying to explain to us. That oh, you can be looking and listening to someone who is of a lower understanding than you have. And they will take you down the river. And then like I said last week or two weeks ago, when they get their revelation, they'll say, how come did you leave what you were in? I've got it now and I didn't understand at the time. And we go down the river. And it's very important. I'm not going to keep talking like this, it's just for today. Apollos was changed. Everyone say, I want my change. I want my change. It says, Paul, verse 1, and it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus and finding certain disciples. And he said to them, have you received the Holy Ghost? Now what I need to say here is that Apollos had changed. He's in the team with Paul. Come on now. He's in that team. He's left the old, the new, the knowledge of man. 
And he's coming to the ways of the spirit of God. Spiritual knowledge is always greater than the knowledge of the new, of the mind. Always. Hallelujah. And it says here that Paul, he, he went to the upper coast, came to Ephesus, finding certain disciples. He said to them, have you received the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, since you believed? And they said unto him, we have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. God bless them, there have been all this. But again, these 12, they were out there teaching, preaching, sharing Christ, but they lacked. They were lacking. Everyone say, I will lack no more. <laughs> say back to me strong, I will lack no more. <laughs> and they said unto him, we have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. And he said unto them, unto what then were you baptized? They said, unto John's baptism. John the Baptist. Then said Paul, John, he baptized you, but he baptized you in terms of your repentance, you leaving your sins and coming to God and now turning to Christ. And he said, with this baptism of repentance, saying that the people, that they should believe on him which should come after him, that is on Christ Jesus. And one say, Christ Jesus. Christ Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Verse 6. And when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. Amen. This is the only case in the Bible where the tongues entered somebody's life and immediately they prophesied. And remember, I think last two weeks ago I was speaking, and I said, look, we can't have people just prophesying. And they have not spoken in tongues. Yes. Here the Bible says they spoke in tongues. Tongues is first. Yes. Then the prophesying. Yes. And I said last few weeks ago, you can't be prophesying when tongues is the language of God. Amen. It is the communication of God. Not you communicating, but God communicating and putting his language inside of us and changing our brains. Come on now. Praise the Lord. I'm being very soft with you, honestly. I'm being soft. But he's changing our brains. He's changing how we think. It comes by the way of the spirit and not of the knowledge of man. No doctorate, no PhD, no high level qualification in this earth can explain God and understand God in the way we would like to him to be explained. The only thing that can explain God is the power of the Holy Ghost. He is the explanatory power that helps us to understand God. Outside of the Holy Ghost, there is no knowledge of God. So these guys, Apollos was preaching. He's earlier in the book of Acts. And Aquila and Priscilla take him home and they shot him the way more perfectly and said, you're doing a great job, but God, Apollos, things are missing. He surrendered. He was mighty in the word. 
the Bible says. These 12 now, they miss, had the missing link. So they got baptized properly in water. And now Paul is laying his hands on them to receive the Holy Ghost. And the sign of the Holy Ghost is speaking tongues. Amen. 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 We speak in tongues. It's the sign of the Holy Ghost. And so you may look at me and I know you believe me, but you're still hearing our voices. I sense that. You're still hearing our voices out there who are preaching to you. But you may forget how, what God has made me to do in the earth. I don't mean to be proud or high in myself. The Lord is taking me to the nations of the world. As the top bishop going around through the continents preaching Jesus Christ. I did all these things and we lay down the same doctrine you're hearing me say here today. In Asia, in the American, North America and South America. And everywhere we went, we preached this same doctrine and it moved the nation and it moved very, very large churches. And you are here with me now. You must see that. You must understand that. Because I speak for God here. This is God speaking for me. And letting us realize. It is the Holy Ghost. It is the power of the Holy Ghost. That changes us. Within. You've got to get this from inside out. Not outside in. The knowledge of man is nothing but compared to the knowledge of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is the mind of God. It is the very spirit of the living God that created and said, let there be light. And there was light. That is the power that is in your very mortal frame. I believe we should give God a shout. We got nothing to be ashamed about because we're tongue talkers. I said we got nothing to be ashamed about because we speak in tongues. Come on now. I don't mean to make people uncomfortable, but I've got to tell you from God's level. I'm coming down from God's level to bring from the mountaintop what God is saying concerning his world. People reject me, I don't care. But I'm going to speak God's word regardless. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. So, they began to speak in tongues. And they prophesied. How comes? Why did they prophesy? I can tell you. These 12 men were preaching. They knew the word of God. They were being used by God in their day. But in a limited way. And they knew the word of God. That's why the Lord said, if you allow me to dwell in me and I dwell in you, you will ask what you will and it shall be done. Amen. That promise is not for everyone. Because first we have to be surrendered to his will. And when we surrender to his will, we can ask of him what we will. Because his will is reigning in our hearts. That we can ask anything. But it will always be in accordance with the Lord's will. It won't be a shopping list. I need a bike. I need a car. I need this. I need that. 
that. It won't be that. That will be added to the, the list, of course. But in the first foremost, you will be speaking the will of God. So when they spoke in tongues for the first time, because they had lots of the word of God in them, then they prophesied on top because the word of God was in them. Amen. And you be, who doesn't have the word of God, would have spoken in tongues, but they would not necessarily prophesy. Because prophecy is a higher gift than tongues. But tongues is the starter. It is the, when you go into your car, let me use your car. When you go into your car, now you press a button. We used to use the key. The key to start the car is the Holy Ghost. It is the starter. You can't run off and say, I want to prophesy, I want to lay hands on the sick. I can't. You need to go first and get your car, open the door, press the button, put your key in, put your gears in, and get the car slowly moving. So the tongue that you get is a slow starter movement towards the greater things that God is planning to give you. Come on. Hallelujah. 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 Somebody say, I want more of the Holy Spirit. I am not satisfied. I want more. There's one person here, five people here, and you haven't spoken in tongues yet. The first thing to do is accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And you ask him to come into your life and surrender. He will touch you and give you cleansing from all sin. When he does that, it's up to him. Mr. David, come. Mr. Robert, come. There are three steps to get to heaven. The first one um, I represent number three. I like that one. But they're number one and number two. In the book of Acts chapter two, it talks how the Spirit of God came upon man in a very special way. The Spirit of God came on man by the Holy Spirit. Amen. And it, but there were things that had to be sorted first. In the book of Acts chapter 1, everyone say Acts, the book of Acts yeah. is the history book yeah. of, of the church. Yeah. If you want to know what the church is, you go to the book of Acts. Yeah. You don't go anywhere else if you want the history. So this is how our church began. It did not begin in any other way. So Jesus was dead. He arose and he set out the plan for the takeover of the earth. And to reverse everything that Satan had placed on this earth. Jesus set it. And he sent them two by two into the world to change it. That means whatever, there's a lot of things going on in the earth. There's always new stuff, negative. 
The church is the power of change. I said the church is the power of the change. You and I, if we really grab a hold of God. Now, as I close, in chapter 1, Jesus spoke to his disciples when he was resurrected. He told them that he was coming back and they knew he was coming back but they said at the Lord's resurrection ascension, they said, Lord, will you now at this time destroy the Romans? Destroy our enemies? Will you at this time overtake our enemies and put Israel at the top again? And the Lord Jesus said, no. He says, it's not for you to know the times and the seasons which the Father has placed in his own power. But he says, but you will receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. So he's saying the people, the disciples, want to change society. A lot of bad things were going on. Robbery, killings, murders, sexual misdemeanors, all kinds of things that we're facing now. And the Jews, the, the, the disciples, wanted Jesus to wipe them out because they knew now Jesus was invincible. Amen. Could not be destroyed. He was not living by blood anymore. He lived by spirit. And so, as Jesus lived by spirit, he want, that's why when he sent the Holy Spirit, he sent his life force. The same life force that has no limit. If we allow him to come in, he will take away the limit on our minds and in our hearts and change everything that we touch. Come on now. And so this is what Jesus came to do. And he said, I will give you power after the Holy Ghost comes upon you. And he said, you will be witnesses to me. He says, you will be martyrs. He told them that you're going to die. He says, you'll be martyrs. That's what witnessing. It's not like witnessing on the street like we do. He says, you will be martyrs. You are going to be killed for me. And they went along with the deal. Because you see, it takes that kind of love for Jesus to leave everything behind and not compromise with things that God doesn't want you to compromise with. You start to change because the important thing is your eternal soul. Where would I be if I was to die tonight? Where would I go? And you say, well, why are you pressing this Holy Spirit thing? Why are you talking like that, Apostle? You haven't stopped for weeks. Why aren't you? Why don't you cool down? I was reading about 30 years ago, a book by a great man of God, I call his name, Kenneth Hagen. Who's heard of Kenneth Hagen? In that book, I read something that shocked me. Actually, 40 years ago, I was struggling, not beyond that actually, I was struggling to speak in tongues. I couldn't speak in tongues, it was hard. I struggled. So he broke his arm, he had an accident and then he was taken to hospital. There's something else put him to hospital, I think I remember another time or the same time. And one night he died. He died. And he said he went down, he was going down to hell, way into the blackness, and he saw the fire. But he was 14. Everyone say 14. It was not 24, it was not 54, it was not 104. The thing was, he didn't speak in tongues. And so he was going down into the fire and he cried out. They said, Lord, I go to Sunday school, I've given you my heart. And he said the demon, he said a demon came and he saw the gates, the main gates of hell and the demon reached out as he was descending and he cried out to God in the hospital bed and then suddenly a voice 
voice came. It was the voice of Jesus and rescued him. From that day, Kenneth Hagen changed and became the man of God we all know he became. A great prophet of God in this nation, an apostle to the world. He was changed by that experience and he was holding out on speaking in tongues and he was on his way. God had to prove to him that you need to have this. That's why I'm preaching the way I'm preaching. I want all the doubts to leave this church. I want all the spirits that are fighting here to cease. I want this by God is telling me that this must stop. We are a church of fire. Our history here is mighty. And no one can come here and change our history. Our history stands. Our history, our personal history as Miracle Christian Center is a church of miracles, signs of wonders, and healing. We will not bow down to any people in school. You know, you're saying, well, this is how I preached on the mission field, my friends. No messing around. Sergeant Bishop, you bring me with me on a couple of these places. No messing about. No messing about. No playing with people's lives. We're not there for money. We're not there for fame. We're there for the gospel of Jesus Christ. We're for that. We're for the Holy Spirit. We're for Jesus. We're for the Heavenly Father. So, finally, the Lord sets out his plans. The baptism of the Holy Spirit fell on the 120 in an upper room. And Peter, who denied Jesus three times, he was a mess. Your life can be a mess. Any of our lives can be a mess. But if we allow the Holy Ghost to come in fully yeah. and not on the basis of what people tell you, but on the basis of the agenda of the living God, on the basis of what God has said in his word, and we love it, and we lap it up, very soft, I'm very kind, I'm very loving, but when it comes to the things of God, I do not mess with anybody. I'll tell you, look you right in the eye, I'll tell you, get yourself right with God.
from today, no more talk, disrespecting the Holy Spirit. No more thoughts around it. You want to watch who you want to watch? Watch them. But if you keep watching them, after a while, they will infiltrate your spirit. And they will change you. Don't allow it. So Jesus comes, and at their Pentecost comes. And he says, when they were all together in one place, the Holy Spirit fell down. It came upon them. Hallelujah. Peter gets up. He says, everyone here I need you to understand. Because people were laughing at them. You must not laugh at the Holy Spirit. People were laughing at them. And Peter boldly stood up and said, this is not you say we're drunk, okay, we're drunk, but by the Holy Spirit. And he says to them, look, this is that which was prophesied to the prophet Joel in the last days. The God said, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy and they will dream dreams. And only young men will be used greatly by God. I know God is saying something here. I know God is saying something. And we're holding the ground. I've got the stakes driven in the ground. We are not moving from this. Oh Lord, I want all these other things. They will come. But we're going back. His Bible says, you must not shift the old landmarks. Because it's old, it's not boring. The day it becomes boring, then you're slipping. Landmarks are there. Repentance. So the first thing that happens in the steps, God, the first step is repentance towards God. We listen and read about the disciples who were preaching. And Paul met them in Ephesus. But they only knew what did they know? What did they know? John's baptism? They only knew repentance. Because Paul said you were baptized in John the Baptist for repentance. You can't stay there. There are two other stages. And a fourth of the life of holiness. You have to come through the stages. This is the first one. Repentance is our job. The individual must repent. Lord, forgive me of my sins. Take away my sins. Lord, forgive me of my sins. I will try not to do those sins anymore, Lord. Help me. And that is called repentance. Everyone say amen. amen. That is called repentance. But that repentance is not enough. We just read it because Jesus came with a new order. He brought a new order. He brought a new system. So the person, they do the first thing of repentance. Lord, I'm weak here. I keep doing this thing. Remember, he's not a Christian, or he's just gotten baptized. He's going to struggle. So you can't stay in that state. You have to move to the next state. you got to go to the next state where the Bible says in Acts chapter 2 and Acts chapter 19, 
In Acts chapter 10, it says they were baptized in water in the name of Jesus Christ. This is the second step here. I'm just breaking it into three so you can see. The second step is necessary. A lot of people, they repent and even get filled with the Holy Spirit, but they don't go back and get baptized. These are necessary. So the individual job, like uh, Mr. Let Robert, he repents. I've shifted to Mr. Let David to show you the next stage. He is repenting, but now it's time for him to be immersed in water in the name of Jesus Christ for the total removal of all of these sins. This one here, God forgives the sins. Number one, our sins are forgiven. This one here, your sins are eradicated. They are gone from you. You are washed and buried. He's buried in the waters of baptism. Come on now. Come on now. So he's buried. Now, this stage, the responsibility is this person to come to God. This stage here, the second stage of water baptism, is not his responsibility. It is selfish ambition. It is the preacher's job now to come and baptize him. This is the personal job. Repent. Give the Lord your sins. The second stage is the Preacher's responsibility. Everyone say the preacher's responsibility. To baptize him in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission, the total removal of the history of all the sins and total removal. If it ever happens, if he slips again, he will have immediate total removal of those sins. The third stage is me. I must receive the Holy Spirit. I must receive Jesus into my heart to live inside me in another form. This third part, if these two are essential, one, two, this third part is essential. You can't water any of them down. They are necessary for your eternal resting place in the kingdom of God. Thank you very much. Let us stand in his presence. Lift up your hands to God. Lord, you gave us a special sign. 
when I receive the Holy Spirit, I will speak in other tongues, in other languages that I did not learn in school.